Welcome back to the Couch Potato Show. This is episode 34. Back again with the boys. Frank, how we doing? Phenomenal this morning. And Eric, how we doing? Tired, but great. Yeah, tired. It's, uh, tired it's Couch Potato day. bright and early. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Couch Potato Show in the morning. Um, all right, we'll jump right into it. Um, we'll start off with the uh, picks from last week real quick. Um, I think we covered the uh, playoffs uh, the, the wild card round of the playoffs in last week's episode. Um, so no real, uh, nothing else came from that. Um, Bowl Mania, our Capital One Bowl Mania on ESPN uh, wrapped up. Eric won that with two points and coming in second was Frank. So he got one point from that. Um, and then the national championship game, all three of us had Alabama and being that I had Alabama in the preseason, um, our current score is Frank has 25, and me and Eric are tied up at 24. Ooh. All right. Let's get into picks for this week. We got the division around the playoffs. Uh, big matchups. Um, this is like something you would put on a movie poster kind of playoff weekend. I mean, you got you got matchups all over the place. Um, let's start off with the battle of the California quarterbacks. Jared Goff versus Aaron Rodgers, Rams versus Packers. Frank, who you got? I'm going to take the Packers. I like their uh, connection with Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. Obviously, he's probably the best one-two connection in the NFL. And the, the Rams quarterback uh, situation is just a freaking mess. Golf, golf hurt his thumb. He had surgery. And uh, the other quarterback, I forget his name, but he uh, destroyed his – Wofford, I think his name is, right? Yeah, he destroyed his neck. So, I think it's I think it's just inevitable if Packers should win this game. Eric? Yeah, here we truly have the unstoppable force moving, meeting the immovable object. This Rams defense is extremely special. I love Jalen Ramsey and what he does. Aaron Donald is fantastic. Best defensive player in the league, arguably, even though I forgot his name one episode of this. If you'd like to go through the archives and find it, I'll give you a dollar bill if you go on the street and show it to me. But <laughs> really, I think Rodgers is just too good this year. He's, in my opinion, the MVP. I don't think you could pick against the Packers this early. I think it'll be a close game. It's a six and a half points for the line and I think it'll be even closer than that I think this is going to be a arguably the best game of the weekend I, I feel like we say that about every game though I'm, I'm excited sure, it's a lot of good games it is like Tyler said but uh I'll go Green Bay I'll go Rodgers yeah I'm gonna take the Packers too I don't think it's I think it's so hard to pick against Aaron Rodgers this year he's been so good all year um the Rams, like Eric said, the Rams are going to put up a fight. I think this is going to be a lot closer game um, for our uh, for our betting friends. Obviously not us, but uh, for our betting friends, I might take the Rams on this one just because of uh, that that point margin. But I think uh, Aaron Rodgers will pull this out in the end. Um, all right, next up we have Lamar Jackson versus Josh Rosen. Ravens versus Bills. Frank, who we got? So Josh Rosen. Yeah, Allen I mean, Rosen. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's eight um, for me, this is the most fun game of the weekend for me personally. Uh, like Eric said, there's a bunch of good games, but I think this is the best one. I think it's going to come down, come down to the quarterback play. If Josh Allen can play like he's been playing the whole year against that Ravens defense, which I think is really good, um, they're going to win the game. I, I think they can, so I'm going to take the Bills. Eric? Yeah, Frank, I concur. This truly is the greatest game of the weekend, in my opinion. And it's this. It's just such a point. It's, so, it's, so it's so interesting. Man. If Lamar and the Ravens show up, you know, if they are playing to the best of their ability, how do you stop them? Like, mm-hmm. truly, I get it. The, the one knock on that offense was, oh, well, they can't come back. They can't come back from a deficit. <laughs> Granted, it was only 10 nothing. We're not talking 28-3 here, but they did it. They did it versus the Titans, and – Titans, I had a lot of respect for coming into that game. I'll start with the Ravens here. I think they get the job done. I think they knock out one of the perennial favorites in the NFL, and uh, they'll move on to the AFC Championship. 
Um, in my opinion, this is going to be the, probably the worst game of the week. Wow. Uh, yeah. Jeez. I think the Bills are just too fucking good. Um, I have all all my money is on Josh Allen, uh, Josh Allen in, this, in these playoffs. He's he's done so well this year, and I, I mean this Bills team is a team that can win a Super Bowl. I don't think the Ravens are quite there. They haven't um, played to the best of their abilities. Lamar Jackson. I mean, they did last week. They did last week, but that was against the Titans defense that is not very good. Um, That's fair. So I'm going to take the Bills on this one. Um, next up, we got Baker Mayfield versus Patrick Mahomes. Um, Browns versus Chiefs. What a fucking matchup this is going to be. Frank, who you got? I'm going to take the Chiefs only because I picked them to win the Super Bowl. You can't pick against them this early. Although I, the Browns were really impressive last week. I think this Chiefs offense is just too explosive with Tyreek Hill, uh, Travis Kelsey, and, and, of course, Patrick Mahomes. So I think it's going to be a really high-scoring game. I don't really – have a ton of faith in these defenses, but uh, I think it'll be fun. I'm going to take the Chiefs, though. Eric, who you got? If I told you there's going to be an upset here, what if I told you? I would not be surprised. No. Really, I'm going to say a lot of of upset Browns fans. Chiefs are going to stomp them into the ground. It's not going to be close. I was hoping you would uh, ride the upset bandwagon there. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with what it's pretty much exactly what Frank said on this one. It's kind of too early to pick against the Chiefs, um, especially with the two weeks off. Um, yeah. Although that has come back to hurt certain teams, so it has. But uh, in recent history, uh, not the Chiefs. <laughs> so <laughs> it's true. I mean, I, they've they've shown no reason that they aren't the best team in the NFL. So I'll take the Chiefs as well. Um, and last but not least on the playoff slate, we have Tom Brady versus Drew Brees. Battle of the Goats. Frankly, you have Buccaneers Saints. I'm going to take the Saints because, again, I have them in the Super Bowl. I think the key to this game will be how the Saints can get to Tom Brady. I said it last week when they played Washington. Uh, I think if you can get to Tom Brady quickly and make him rush and be <laughs> frantic. I know it's Tom Brady, but if there's one way to beat him, it's to get to him early and quickly. And for the Bucs, you got to get in the red zone. The Saints red zone defense isn't great. Uh, all of their overall defense is pretty good. But I think the Saints are going to pull this out with, with defense. Eric? I want to pick the Bucks so badly with the two times Saints played the Bucs. It hasn't even been close. They've, they've just yeah. dominated both games. It's been ridiculous. But, you know, one was week one. One, I think, was like midseason. I don't put stock in week one games. I don't know. I think it's just too I don't early. think you can. Especially Tom Brady with a new team. Seriously. Yeah. That, yeah. Whole, that whole roster was new. So I'm I'm going two upsets on the weekend. Ravens and I'm going Bucks. It's wow. Fun. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. No, I'm gonna ride I'm gonna ride the hot hand as well. I'm going Bucks in this game. I think uh, I think the Saints struggled a lot last week against the Bears. Oh my god, can the Bucks should not happen. Um and uh, I think Tom Brady and the Bucks are literally unstoppable right now. I mean, if you watch them play the last uh, time. Dude, I don't know. They played Washington last week. They played, I don't know. Yeah, but if you watch them play the last couple of weeks, that offense is dialed in. Yeah, but I like the Saints defense a lot. They're yeah, the Saints defense. defense is great, but their offense can't do shit. They can't really put up any points against the Bears. I don't know. I think that's a fluke. I don't know. I don't know. I'm taking, taking the Bucks. Um, all right, let's jump into uh, UFC because UFC is back this week. Um, oh, my God. I'm going to try and pronounce this right because I know for a fact I got it wrong last time. Is it Cater versus it's Cater? Yeah. You got it. It's Cater. Most fun. Um, all right, so, Eric, what are we going to see this week uh, tomorrow night on uh, UFC Fight Night? Yeah, we have so many. No, this is UFC two, three. So, well, this is this is the first ever UFC on ABC. It's yeah. like a one, one fight deal for now. But you know, maybe if they put up a good performance, who knows? Maybe they'll re-sign the UFC to a few other events. I don't love the timing. Of course, I believe it's going to be during an NFL playoff game because it's uh, three p.m. the East on Saturday. 
But either way, I'm so excited the UFC is back. I'm more excited for the UFC than hockey starting than mid basketball season because the Knicks suck now and then the fo- football could rig. But I don't think Knicks, anybody's excited for the NHL season to start. Yeah, not really. Go to Canada. What are you going to do? <laughs> but listen, man, Cater, the Bostonian, he's so, so good at one of the most underrated strikers in the UFC. He's also got a nice, well rounded game to him. I'm so high on Cater. I think he is fantastic and this is this would be a signature win right here that he wins this he gets a title shot and he's so dialed in he models his like preparation after bill belichick once again because he's a bostonian guy but he really really takes this game seriously he's a true professional i like him a lot max holloway coming off a controversial loss to alexander volkanovsky back some could argue back-to-back controversial losses to alexander volkanovsky but besides that He's been pretty good. Granted, I believe he lost three out of his last four, two to Volkanovski and one to Poirier, but still arguably the greatest featherweight of all time. Certainly a top three featherweight of all time. I don't think that's debatable. But I think this one's going to take place on the feet, and it'll be interesting. If someone's going to take it to the ground, I imagine it would be Cater, but I think we'll see this one on the feet. All right, so with that, Frank, who do you have? I was trying to find if there was a pick in there. I couldn't decipher <laughs> Uh, I, just, I, I could go on for like hours. <laughs> I think you're excited for UFC to be back. I'm so excited. Um, I'm gonna take Cater. I believe in I believe in Cater like uh, Bender does for some reason. He's the underdog. Uh, I did I did was, I didn't take underdogs in season one, but uh, you know why not switch it up just for fun? So we're gonna take Cater. Eric, we got. Yeah, I do love Cater, but unfortunately, I'm gonna have to go with Holloway. I, you know, I, I hope I didn't guide Frank wrong. But, uh, yeah. It's all right, man. Listen, listen. I got. It's all right. I'm not a UFC guy. I'll take the yellow. Uh-huh. Cater could easily win this fight. I'd argue Cater's the harder puncher. Seriously, I. He, I mean, the odds be- are close because I because I obviously I looked up the odds because I went by. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really close fight. It's a really close fight. But I'll give the edge to the Hawaiian Max Holloway. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Holloway as well. Uh, just because I think he. I mean, if you saw, if you watched the the end of that, uh, the last Volkanovski fight, you could tell that he was pissed off with how that ended. Um, and I would be too if that if I was in his shoes. I mean, that was a very controversial win uh, for Volkanovski. So I think Holloway is coming in with uh, some kind of some some grit in him. I think he's going to pull this one out against uh, against Cater and first ever uh, ABC fight. John Hammond's an idiot. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, all right. And let's wrap up picks with the start of the NHL season. Um, we're just gonna we're just gonna do Stanley Cup matchup and Stanley Cup champion. Uh, just so we don't have to get all into it because no one really cares about hockey. <laughs> um, Frank, who you got? Stanley Cup matchup. Now I took the underdog in UFC so I can cop out in hockey because I know less about hockey than UFC. Uh, we're going to take the Avalanche and the Lightning. Two of the best teams. Screw it. Eric, who you got? Yeah, all right. I'll switch it up a little bit then. I'll take the Lightning still. Stay, gotta love Stamkos. Gotta love points. Stamkos, and yes, he knows instead him. of the Avalanche, I'll take – I'll take Boston. The Boston Bruins, Devils oh, just played him yesterday. I know, I know. Ridiculous. Uh, gotta love Martian. Gotta love uh, Bergeron. Probably pronouncing that wrong, but it's okay. He's not a fan, so. <laughs> It'll be Boston. It'll be Tampa Bay. Why not? Yeah, I'm going to go – I'm going to go Flyers, and I'm going to go Avalanche. I like the Flyers pick. Yeah, Flyers, Flyers are looking good. Not, they are. Not, not, not fantastic, but they looked good the other night against the Penguins. Uh, I believe the Avalanche are one of the best teams in the NFL. Yeah, they're the perennial favorite. If not, are the best team in the NHL right now. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go. And, I'm gonna go Flyers and Avalanche. Uh, and Frank, who do you have winning? I'm gonna take the Avalanche. I think it's really hard in, in sports overall to go back to back. Although there are many teams that have done it, but I think it's just really tough. So I'm gonna take the Avalanche. All right. I'm going to take Lightning. I think they do. I think it's a really special team. I think it's been a special team for the past, like, four to five years. Finally got that ring last year, and I think they'll do it again. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go Flyers just to be just to be different on this one. Uh, I don't. I again, like Eric, like Frank said, I don't think the Lightning are gonna go back to back. It's hard to do that, um, especially in this new playoff format. Um, so I'm gonna go uh, championship in Philly. Unfortunately, but yeah. First time, first one in a while, probably. Yeah. That's um, what I'm oh wait, with the Phillies, probably. No. The Eagles. Flyers went before that. Eagles or after that. Eagles. Oh yeah, sorry, my bad. I'm sorry. Um. So some uh, breaking news. Um. According to John Hammond, because he is our only credible source now. Yeah, John Hammond's John Hammond's an idiot. No, I mean John Morosi's worse. It's true. But per John Hammond, the Yankees are indeed close on DJ LeMahieu. So it's about damn time. Uh, it's ridiculous, dude. Uh, I'm hesitant to see what these uh, this length is. If I'm the Yankees, I'd probably go to five just because that's what he wants. And you know, he's been an MVP candidate for two years in a row, so we give him what he wants. But I think I think it's a good deal. I think it's stupid not to do it. Like we wanted DJ. DJ wanted to come back. It's what else are you gonna do? Yeah, I'm I'm interested to see what the salary is, honestly. I think it's gotta be at least twenty million. That guy was won a batting title. I think he finished second in the batting title the first year he was here. Top five MVP, MVP candidate two years in a row. I think he's got to make at least 20 million. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what it is. Um, the uh, There was big news earlier in the week. Um, I, uh, James Harden's been wanting out of Houston for a while, um, and he finally got out. Um, Frank, you want to break down that uh, trade? What exactly what went down? James Harden to the Nets? Of course, Tyler, just for you. Thank you. So it was a 14 trade between the Rockets, Nets, Cavs, and Pacers, and I had to write this all down because it's a massive deal. The Rockets get Exum, Rodney Karut, Victor Oladipo from the Pacers, four first-round picks from the Nets, one Oladipo from the – one... Sorry, what? The Oladipo trade was separate. It's separate, but it involves the same pieces, so I just grouped it together. Uh, four first round picks from the Nets, all, all unprotected, and then four pick swaps also from the Nets. The, the Nets get James Harden in a second round pick. The Cavs get Jared Allen and Torian Prince, and then the Pacers get Karis Levert and a second round pick. Eric, your Knicks are no longer the big dog in New York. Were they ever the big dog in New York? Yeah. No, I was just kidding. <laughs> No, but it it seems like it's uh, it's a done deal that the Nets are really going. I mean, we knew they were all in before, but knowing that Kyrie is no guarantee to even be in the vicinity of uh, the facilities on an, any given basis, um, I think adding James Harden who pretty much plays every day. Um, that's going to be a dangerous duo of James Harden and Kevin Durant. I may be the only person in America that doesn't like this deal. You might be the only person in America. Yeah, I don't. I don't like this team. That's just my opinion. You don't like I the think, Nets? Yeah, I think it's going to be a disaster. Oh well, no. If I was a Net, if I was okay, if I was a Nets fan, I would hate this deal. Yeah, I, I'm not a Nets fan, so I couldn't they, care less. The isolation team one on one ball is going to be outrageous. There's going to be nothing but one on one. They still have no defense. They traded Jared Allen, who was arguably the, their best defender. They don't have any center position depth. It's DeAndre Jordan and nobody else. I don't know. I I get like the superstar name. Like I was talking. I forgot I was talking to last night, but it's like the deal in two K that you make, and then two K just gives you championship because all the names on your team. Yeah. Like I don't think it'll actually work out in real life. And you already know there's gonna be off the court problems because Katie's a hothead. James Harden's a hothead. Kyrie is Kyrie. I think it's going to be a mess. Yeah, I think th- this is going to be a team that just it, – it'll look good on – it'll look good with the starting lineup because he's still got um, – Dinwiddie's still there. I think he comes back. No, Dinwiddie's hurt. Yeah, but when does he come back? A month? I think he's out for the year. 
Oh. I'm pretty sure like towards or towards ACL or something. Hold on, I'm Googling. No, it wasn't that. Um, Torn right ACL. Oh, there you go. So he's done for the year. Okay, so you get Joe Harris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's them three, Joe Harris and DeAndre Jordan as their starting lineup. I don't know. I think I think they just gave up the one thing that they really had going for them, which was yeah. star power and then depth. Like, they don't have any depth anymore. I don't know. I just don't like it. And plus, they gave up, like, was it eight picks? Yeah. Or I Give guess – future. And... So they're praying this works out now because it doesn't. if it doesn't work out, they're screwed. All right, so never mind, Eric. The Knicks are looking pretty good right now. Whoa. Yeah. Just a matter of time to win that chip, baby. Can't wait. Yeah. Big game versus the Cavs tonight, 730. Oh, the Cavs time. are going to whoop your ass. Dude, they got Jared Allen now. You're screwed. Yeah, that's not going to end well. <laughs> Dude, that defense? Oh. I like Jared Allen a lot. I don't know why they traded Jared Allen. Yeah, they got Jared Allen now. They got Colin Sexton playing defense out of his mind. He's a really good defender, yeah. Yeah. I like his stuff for the Pacers, too. They got Karis LeVert. That guy's going to be a star. Especially if it's, like, his team. I mean, I guess they still have Sabonis, but it's going to be Sabonis and LeVert. The Rockets this year turned things around like that. I mean, they I think in terms of in terms of this year, I don't think they're going to win anything. But in terms of like future assets, yeah, yeah they're still a playoff. Team. I mean, this is just a team that like is good. They have Oladipo now. I got John Wall, Christian Wood's a god. I, I don't know. Like, I I was I watched Christian Wood in the past, but again in, in Detroit, he never got any minutes, so I never really got to see anything. But because well, he had the Roni, so now he has superpowers. That's true. Superhuman. I don't know. I I think it's a playoff team, but I don't know if they're gonna. You know, go anywhere. I think they're gonna be good. Just well, some... what are they like right now? Like four and six or something? I don't know. I mean, they could turn around. James Harden, no. Yeah, but James Harden didn't, didn't care on that team. And he had plays. So that's why they were four. Also... So now they got a little depot. He's gonna play. I think Old Depot's still. Uh, he's not as good as he used to be. Uh, a couple of years ago, when he was like an all-star, like pro all-star, but I think he's still a very good, solid player. Listen, this team is not going to win the finals, but I think they'll, they'll make the playoffs. And... Yeah, they'll make the playoffs, but I think they're out first round. I, don't know about that. I think they could be like a six seed or something. Who, Nets? Are we talking about? No, the Rockets. Jesus oh, Christ, Eric. Can you wake the fuck up? It's, no, it's 10 o'clock. For you. I mean, you got no excuse. I'm tired. My <laughs> I, yeah, I think they're like a six seed. Uh, I think they're out in the first round. But again, future very good. Once I get John Wall's contract off the books, very good. Yeah. I think I think he's a player option next year or something. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of talk this week uh, in the NFL world um, regarding head coaching jobs. Uh, Eric, Eric, your uh, your Jags just got a big splash. Uh, how do you feel about the Urban Meyer hire? Listen, man, Urban, if you're watching, and I know you are, someone, so one of his assistants is going to be like, Urban, you got to see this. This is very valuable information. First press conference, you got to go in there. I'm talking to boom, Rex Ryan style. Just call everyone out, every <laughs> single coach. Fucking uh, Joe Judge, come at me, bitch. Straight up like that. Every <laughs> You think you're hot shit because Brady carried you? Nah, buddy, not anymore. I'm, and I'm, all 31 other coaches, all 31 other, literally, I want that to be the press conference. Then he takes the mic, chucks it to the back of the room, <laughs> storms out. This is the way you get the NFL to be like, holy shit, imagine this guy making a playoff run. How many good sound bites he would give us? This is crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how I feel about it. If he's willing to talk some shit, I'm, I'm on Team Urban. What if, he, if he's going to sit there like this and, uh, you know, we're trying, we're trying to, you know, practice, team win? No, I don't like that. Arrogance, Boring. obnoxiousness. Give me some passion. That's how I feel. I don't know. I, I, what I do think you think, that, Tyler? You're familiar. I think that can work in college. I don't know if that can work in the NFL. 
I well, think the problem is if you, if you go in and do that and then your team sucks, they'll just fire you. Yeah. No, listen, I get that. And I say it's a rig, but at the end of the day, if you don't have a team that could win games, it's hard to like make a team to really, you know, if you're down 14 points, they can't really push you to the win. But if it's a one possession game, you know, a PI call here, a holding call there, you never know. So I'm just saying, if we keep it close, we're winning games if the NFL likes us. Oh, the NFL will like you. Well, listen, you're about to have Trevor Lawrence, so they'll probably like you. We'll see. I don't know. You know, he's going to play well. And his stupid hair. I don't think his hair. You know, we'll see. <laughs> Get a haircut, Trevor. Love you. Better, what, do you what do you like about Trevor Lawrence? I've heard nothing besides criticism. I uh, Let's see what he does in the NFL. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. Okay. You know, like I get it. You don't. Here's here's something I like about him. I'll be you know, I'm Mr. Glass half full. We all know this. <laughs> he was the number one quarterback coming out of high school in the nation. And he's the number one quarterback coming out of college. That might sound a little bit silly, but it's very rare to do both. Very rare to be the number one consensus quarterback at both levels. So that's good. It could show longevity. It could show consistency. That's phenomenal. But. Let's let's uh succeed where it counts, buddy. We'll see. I don't know. I think Urban Meyer is going to be a dud uh, head coach. Entirely the- possible. I just think I just think coaching. There's like yeah, <laughs> makes sense. I, I just think coaching in college is so much different than coaching the pros. I mean, how many guys have succeeded that there succeeded in college originally? Breaking news when you're done talking. Okay, yeah, I'll get there in a second. Um, how many how many coaches in college succeeded and then went to the NFL and succeeded also? I mean, um, well, Nick Saban, Saban, sucked Saban did it. Saban was bad. Um, who else? I don't know. Chip Kelly was awful in the NFL. Um, I'm more excited for the Jets head coach. Honestly, I'm not even like a Jets fan. Yeah, the Jets. The Jets hired Rob Sala, who was the defensive coordinator for the 49ers. and I mean that defense with all the injuries they had, they were still really good. They were. They finished fifth in the NFL. Yeah, and then the year before that, they went to the Super Bowl based on their defense. So. That that team is unbelievable. That he he's unbelievable. I think the Jets. It's the problem. It's just the Jets. I mean, they won't be – like, they obviously won't be as good as the 49ers on defense, but I think they can actually be competent. I, I don't see them making, like, a significant, significant jump, but they can get, like, I don't know, five, six wins maybe. I don't know. It's supposed to be the draft well. Depends who they draft too. Well, do you get a quarterback at two? I would, yeah. I, I, I think it's a mess with Sam Darnold. I don't think he wants to be there anymore. I don't think they want them want him. I don't think they, he wants to be there anymore question is do you go like Justin Fields who's played really well in the playoff or do you go like Trey Lance or Zach Wilson or something like that I don't know. um Trey Lance I don't think so I think it'll be Zach Wilson they might go Patrick Sertan they could go Sertan too I, just because I think it's I think it's too early to draft a, a, a cornerback at two I, don't know. I think you'd rather go quarterback. I think it is too but I mean Saul is a defensive guy so yeah, but I think they would rather, like, get the offensive player and then have him just, like, shape the defense with what he's got. Because if there's anyone that can shape that defense with what it is, like, it's him. Yeah. yeah who, I mean, you, who knows? They could get Devontae Smith with two. The, dude, he jumped up, like – because I remember a couple weeks ago I was, like, texting you guys. I was like, oh, mock draft has Devontae at, like, 13. Giants could get him. And now he's, like, now he's like at three or four. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's – Giants have 11, but – Although I think Waddle could drop to him. I take Waddle. Yeah, I'll take Waddle. Um, breaking news per Except, uh, athletic, I guess. And Rosenthal, I guess. Yeah. John Heyman, Rosenthal, Sherman. Uh, Kenny got it. Which is better because, like I said before, there's no one else tweeted this all. Oh, yeah, I'll give it to Ken Rosenthal. Um, DJ LeMay, huge deal with the Yankees, expected to be four to five years, um, up to $90 million. 
So what's that quick math? 90. Eight, 18, that, that'd be cheap. I don't know. I think that's a little bit low. Eight. I mean, listen, if they want to save money on DJ. Four, it could be four years, 90. It could be four years, 90. That's also a possibility. Which case would be like 22? 22 and a half, so yeah. 22 and a half. I think that's more real, realistic for his services. Um, either way, it, it was a deal that they had to make. There was, there was no going around it. Yeah. So, I'm curious to see now, because it was kind of like, like the entire market for position players is kind of stalling because of DJ, because he was the best position player available probably, besides maybe like JT Romuto. But I think the market's going to get going. And it, get, it got going last night, actually. So I think it's going to... Yeah. It's going to get um, interesting again. Oh, because I was, five, four, six different. years. Oh, can we pick one? These guys are idiots, dude. Jeff Passman is reporting six years, $90 million. Holy crap. Six years at 90 would be a freaking steal. That's 15 a year. I'd be cool with the length if it's only for 90. Six year, $90 million deal. I'm cool with that. Listen, I was apprehensive about six years, but if you get them for 90 million, psh, do it. Screw it. You could always trade them, I guess. I don't know. Huh, that's a big deal. Because now, now they can actually make other moves. Like they could get, they could go resign Tanaka. They could go get a couple of relievers, maybe. I don't know. I'm talking like a Yankees fan. They're like, we're going to sign everybody. But, and you got money in the future for when you got to pay Glaber. And so you got to pay everybody. Judge Glaber. Yeah, uh, but those two, those two are the priority. Those other guys that you could. Talk. I don't know. I think Gary can rebound. I, you guys are, you're not Gary people. I, I think Gary can rebound. Yeah, me too. No, I think Gary has a better chance of rebounding in the NBA than he does at playing baseball. I agree. <laughs> I'm with Eric there. Yeah, the Nets need. Oh, you guys. Are, I th- I think Gary can can come back to form. That's just my opinion. The net. Hey, the Nets need. Uh, the Nets need defense. And uh, Gary, man. Oh well. Gary, Gary's a big guy. Gary will just stand in the paint with his massive self and just be like, "Big guy." Can't he can't move around, but he can stand in the middle of the paint. Yeah. Asking for a violation. That's right. Um, this is so interesting. I'm gonna we're gonna start a uh, new segment here on the uh, on the pod. Oh boy, um, not a super long one. Um, but I was talking with Frank, and we were like, some something we kind of had to do. Um, new uh, new segment is called Couch Potato Corner. And uh, basically, every week, we're just going to – I just knocked something over. Um, every week, every week we're just going to highlight some things that are going on with the guys uh, that we have interviewed in the past. Um, obviously, news defender. Because um, he doesn't read the doc. So, um, <laughs> what? What? Uh, over losing Bender, come back. Can't confirm. Okay, it's okay. Sorry. Um, you're back. You're... So real quick, uh, news from uh, Jaden Lamond, um, now a uh, projected four-star point guard, class of 2023. Um, the new rivals rankings um, for that class have come out. And Jaden Lamond is ranked 30 in that class. Um, other notable names on that list, uh, LeBron James Jr., ranked 24. And uh, Mikey Williams, ranked number five. That's going to be a good class. It's a really good class. Uh, the next, the next like, three years are really good uh, classes overall. Um, News from Raphael Lassard. Um, he is confirmed to be running the entire uh, the entire season for GMS Racing, uh, the entire truck season for GMS Racing under the Canac sponsorship. Um, and yeah, that's it. Um, and now back to a good old segment that Eric loves. Uh, Tyler's top five. Oh yeah. And this week, 
Um, I was talking with Frank a couple days ago after Eric uh, wow. hopped off. I believe this was after our last last podcast. Um, and we were just we were just talking. We were looking at the uh, college basketball rankings and pick Alabama I mean, first, no matter what the category is. Huh? I'm gonna say Alabama first, no matter what the category is. Okay, that that's not even close. Oh, okay. Um, and we we were, we were talking, and me being the uh, me being here in Alabama, I wanted my team ranked because we're a pretty damn good basketball team. So I look at the rankings, and there's this team named Saint the St. Louis Billikens, and they're <laughs> ranked somehow. And that got me thinking. So I was like, okay, I don't know what the fuck. A, Eric, can you cut, tell me what a Billiken is? You see, Tyler, a Billiken. You're not going to get it, Bender. No, I know it. You know, like the Bills, the Bills, the Buffalo Bills, and a kin. <laughs> kin, kin. You know, like a webkin, the stuffed animal? Oh, yeah. It's a specifically a bill webkin. I don't know if you know that, but that is 100% the answer. It's accurate. Yeah. You're welcome. So, yeah. I saw it on the school's website. The, the Billikens got me thinking. Uh, what other stupid uh, mascot names are there in uh, college sports? So I went on last night, and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna prepare a top five, top five stupidest names in college sports." And I could not come up with a top five because there were so many. <laughs> so we're just gonna sit here and, you know, rattle them off. So I'm gonna just I'm just gonna go through the list that I put together. And okay. you guys can feel free to jump in if you think if you think you thought of a school that could possibly be on there. I got what? one. What shot the clears on there? The Seton Hall Pirates. How dumb is that? Jesus How dare Christ. you? It's pretty fucking dumb. Is it dumb? Come on. Watch your mouth. I'm offended by that. Pirates have done terrible things. I'm offended. Sure. No, we couldn't put Chanticleers on there just because uh, we actually know what they are and actually. Uh, That's true. We did. We did look at them. So. A fighting rooster is pretty badass. No getting better. Than well, that. yeah. Once, you, like, by the name, you're like, "What the hell is that?" When you look it up, it's actually, it's okay. It's pretty good. So, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start running that. Run through this list. Um, first off, we have the Central Michigan Chippewas. What's a Chippewa? Exactly. Um, the I, Chippewa. I have one with me. Do you, can you tell me what a Chippewa is? No, but I have. I have an answer. Okay, the Chippewa is a Native American tribe, which nowadays pretty on the spectrum. Um, not the biggest fan of the name there. And then I looked it up, and the Chippewa tribe was so small there was probably like ten to fifteen people. That's well, how name, big, that's how big. Why would you name your team after that then? And then I did I did some more research, and I found that the name Chippewa was the name of a boot company. <laughs> was it after the boots, or was it after the tribe? So I don't know, but the boot company obviously employs employs more than fifteen people. So I'm going to go with the fact that Central Michigan named their mascot after a boot. It's true. Um, next up, we got Ohio State. Uh, I don't know who the fuck names their team after, after a nut. I don't know what the hell a Buckeye is. I've never heard of a Buckeye nut before um, until I heard of Ohio State. Um, if you think that a nut is very fucking uh, scary or intimidating, I think you're on crack. I would have went with <laughs> pistachio. I like pistachios a lot. Listen, I'm a big, I'm a big fan. I'm a big pistachio guy. Love it. Um, I got, I got an entire thing of pistachios right here. So. Oh, look at that. On yeah. cue. Uh, is, the, uh, is, the, is the keg on there? I think it's the Darwin Fudge. The keg? What keg? There's a mascot that's the keg. It's not Division One, is it? I think it's Dartmouth, though, Division One. Who's mascot? I don't think it's... I don't think it's the keg. keg. Is, I don't know if it's a... Yeah, Dartmouth. Oh, unofficial. Okay, never mind. It's unofficial. Um, I'm gonna but yeah, it's a keg. 
Um, so that's great. <laughs> Concrete Purdue, looking. Purdue Boilermakers. Um, what the fuck? Who the Purdue. fuck names? Who the fuck names their school the Boilermakers? Um, what is it? I don't even know. It's a it's a person who makes boilers. Is that actually what it is, or you just I, I did some research. research. I did some research. Um, and they they formally went before they had an actual name. They formally went by um, a great big burly gang of corn huskers, which honestly would have been better. That would have been. It's kind of long, but it would have been better. Uh, the Grangers, the Pumpkin Shuckers. The rail, pumpkin shuckers would have been better. The blacksmiths, the cornfield sailors, and foundry hands. Do they just pride themselves in coming up with dumb names? Yeah. So, Purdue. I mean, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I think they Next. should be named the Purdue Chicken Nuggets. That's what I would do. Honestly, that would have been so much better. What about tenders? I don't know. I feel like tenders would be better. Okay. Next up, we got Stanford. I mean, well, they're, the tre- the, they're the trees or something, right? Listen, for, for a school that prides itself on education, somebody needs to fucking educate these people on what the fuck a cardinal is. A cardinal is a bird. So why the fuck are you naming your school the Stanford Cardinal if your mascot is a tree? I don't know. They live in the trees. That doesn't make any sense. Then just make it a bird. I don't know. I'm kind of like cardinals. It doesn't make any sense. What kind of tree is it? It's I don't I, I don't know. It's a tree. No, there's different kinds of trees. What kind of tree? I don't think it's called a cardinal tree. No, there's no such thing as a cardinal tree. Then maybe well, they, exactly. Then why the fuck are they named the cardinal? Because maybe they live in the redwood. Tree. It's a redwood tree. So what kind of trees? But just na- just make your mascot a fucking cardinal. The cardinals live in. Oh, Redwood. All right, I'm going to keep going. Um, next up. Actually, no, not Redwood. I don't know. This is dumb. Next up, Tulsa. Now, Tulsa oh. owns the award for having the heaviest mascot. I'm, call- in I'm the calling mascot. Cap. In the mascot world, they have the heaviest mascot. Dude, uh, also- you can't shit on Tulsa for being the green wave. Or No, no, they're not. No, that's, 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 that's too late. Sorry. I'm going to smoke. Sorry. That's too What's Tulsa again? The Golden Hurricanes. I kind of like that, actually. What the? F- have you ever fucking seen a Golden Hurricane, Frank? Well, no. Eric, I haven't seen a lot of these mascots. I've never seen a pirate before. Eric, have you ever seen a Golden Hurricane? I don't think I've ever seen a hurricane before in person, thankfully. Ah, uh, six years. Yeah, I already six. knew that. Well, it was five or six, but now it's ten or six. I already said that. No, you said five or six. Can no, you stop? You're so mean. Dear Lord. <laughs> All right, Tyler. To, to combat your point, have you ever seen a Crimson Tide before? All the time. All right, I'm moving on with the list. Um, <laughs> there you go. The Vanderbilt Commodores. Com- no, that's not bad. That's actually the thing. I don't know what Commodore is. This one, this one had a little bit of an exception. I like the name the Commodores. It's a little confusing because not a lot of people know what a Commodore is. That's because people are dumb. Yes, but once you know what a Commodore is, then you understand the name. The reason why I don't like it is because it's so similar to the Vanderbilt commodes. Hmm. All you got to do is just take out take out the R, and you're naming your school after a toilet. Is that what those are? I don't know what they're called. Yeah. Is it? A toilet. Commodo? I don't know what that is. Commodo. Toilet, I guess? Yeah. It's a bathroom yeah. toilet. Yeah. Like a brand of toilets or like a type of toilet? No, it's like an, it's like an outhouse. It's like a... Oh, okay. Yeah. A commode. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I don't like that one. Next up, we got uh, Campbell. Um... The Fighting Camels. <laughs> now, 
there's some pills that you can probably take. <laughs> <laughs> there's some pills you can probably take to see a golden hurricane. <laughs> but I don't know what you got to take to see a camel fighting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I mean... <laughs> Right, There's got to be a video of camels fighting. There's no. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm I'm Google it. I don't know, but no one go through my search history. This camels is, fighting. This is absurd. I don't know why you named your school the Fighting Camels. I've never fucking heard of a camel. Thousands fight. gather to watch camels fight. Oh boy, guys, it's getting intense. I don't know if I condone this. Um, they they do exist. There are videos. And then the best part is they. You know how some schools that like they're they're. Uh, the teams, uh, their female teams, they name like, ah. like like Tennessee's, like the Lady Volunteers. Yeah, my school does the same thing. It's like the Lady Pirates or something. Um, you know what Campbell does? Don't say it. I think I should say it. You say it. <laughs> they are the Campbell Sugar Camels. That's even worse than I expected. That's so That's dumb. That's worse than I thought it would be. <laughs> oh, my God. That They're is the Campbell ridiculous. Sugar cam- Camels. Why sugar? Like what? I, I don't know because I don't know. Um, next up, uh, Presbyterian College. This is a weird one. I know this one. Uh, the Blue Hose. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler, can you clarify when you say hose? What kind of hoe do you mean, Tyler? No, not a hoe. It's a hose. Like when you oh, go hose. Out, oh, okay, okay. You go outside. Our mistake. And you gotta, and you gotta like water the plants or whatever. In fairness, I thought you could have been referring to some coquettish smurfs. Smurfs. Okay. No, no. I was thinking are... a garden. A garden. Get your mind out of the gutter, Bender. Come on. No, Sorry, everyone. This is Sorry. a regular uh, blue garden hose. Got it. Um, that they named their school after. Uh, and just to make it intimidating, they had to make it blue. Of course. Um, and then last but not least, couldn't they couldn't leave them off the list? Uh, I mean, they're, they're the reason why we're here. Uh, the St. Louis Billikens. What, what the fuck is a Billiken? We talked about it already. Yeah, it's a, and it's I a did, fictional I creature. More. That brings listen, good luck. Listen, listen, I did some more research. Some more research. Uh, the Billiken is actually a doll. Yeah. It's like fictional, though. It's a fictional doll. Is that a bender? Is that a Billiken? It is. It uh, looks kind of interesting. I'm not intimidated, got to be honest. I don't know. The logo looks pretty good. No. So, so all these, all these really got me thinking. A little more. This is probably the most amount of thinking I've done in a long time. I mean, you go to Alabama, so it's probably been a while. It was a lot of thinking that went into this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you guys this because I'm genuinely curious. Eric, what is your biggest fear? Wow, what a great question. I think my biggest fear... I, I'm, I'm, my biggest fear is where this is going. Is... general failure i fear okay, nothing let's, more let's, let's get in that let's let's cut the bullshit like physical things like oh like phobias yeah like come on like what do you what i listen i don't like spiders but i also don't want to like have three children and lose my job like okay, that's let's, can we go with spiders then no no uh We're some, go with... someone breaking into my house that's terrifying horror movies that are like the Baba Duke, like fictional creatures, I laugh at. But horror movies like Hush or like whatever. Bad movies are. like, like someone trying to actively break into your house is terrifying. Is so realistic. It could easily happen, you know. Yeah, that's scary. All right, I'll make the question a little easier, yeah. Frank, so I get the answer I want. Frank, what's your biggest phobia? Are we counting heights as a phobia? Do you want the do you want physical our answer? Phobia. Do I just name off common ones? Do you want com- spiders? I don't know. Yeah. So okay. So let's just think of the Richmond spiders both, is what I'm. Both, both of you referenced spiders at some point. Um, 
hate spiders. Right. I don't mind spiders, but you, you want the answer of spiders. So, we'll so I was like, okay. There's only one Division One school. Yeah, I can tell you who it is. That has named. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we can all tell, tell you who it is. Bender can. Named their school after a spider, which is the most common fear among human beings. And that's Richmond. So I was thinking, why the fuck are all these teams, are all these schools naming themselves after a garden tool, after a toilet, after something that you have to be on LSD to see, after a fucking <laughs> tree, or after a fucking nut, when you could just make your team intimidating by just calling them the spiders? Are you really intimidated by a spider, though? It's more fucking intimidating than a fucking blue hose. Yeah. But in fairness, I think it's the most important thing in a team name is marketing. I think it needs to be something you're able to market. You can market, but you could market spiders more so than a toilet. I'm with you there. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I agree with better. I think it's more than a blue hose. I think it's like you got to be able to market it, but you also got to be unique so there's not 20 teams with the same name. You know? Yeah, you don't want to be the Bobcats. You don't want to be the like the Bulldogs. You don't want to be Spartans, Bulldogs, Spartans, yeah. Bobcats, Pirates. Hey, who cares? I mean, it's all it's all the same in high school. Why can't it all be the same in college? I don't know. I, I just don't understand. <laughs> um, that'll wrap it up for this week. Um, unless you guys got anything else to say. DJ LeMayhew, um, six years, $90 million. Steal. Steal. Um, we will see you guys next week. Uh, we'll talk about the playoffs. And that's about it. Um, there's nothing really else to talk about. Um, NASCAR is coming back in a few weeks. Uh, so that'll be big. Um, and yeah, so for the boys, signing off, adios.